Good afternoon, this is Dave Gleason with another orchard update. We're in a cherry orchard in the Yakima Valley and it's spring, things are starting to happen again. After a long cold winter with snow and dark gray days, it's really enlightening and encouraging to see green happening on the hills and in the valleys and also the trees coming to life again. And when there's so many flowers in the valleys, it's a beautiful time of year. We're in a cherry block here and it's uh, early in the bloom stage. We're seeing probably 50% of the bloom that's open now. And the whole pollination process is really complicated. To me, it's surprising. Sometimes when you think of all the details that have to come together to make a fruit, that things do come together every year and, and we do produce quite a bit of fruit in the Yakima Valley and in Eastern Washington. So the flower, when it first opened, of course, the parts of the flower, the pistils, stamen, anthers, uh, petals, uh, nectaries, sepals, all these things uh, play different parts in the role of making that fruit. And a pistil is the center part that becomes the fruit and it has a stamen, the top part of that pistil where the anther drops pollen and the pollen tubes grow down and fertilize the plant. Uh, for the first day that that flower is open, that surface is not very receptive to the pollen. In fact, it's a little bit dry. And if the temperature's cold or the temperature's too hot, then it changes the way that that pistil stamen develops and changes its susceptibility to receiving that grain of pollen. And also, a particular flower like a Bing cherry has to have a different kind of pollen to pollinate it. It can't be self-fruitful, so it takes pollen from another plant. So all of our orchards are planted with at least one and sometimes two different kinds of extra cherries in those blocks, and that's true with apples and most varieties as well. So it, it's complicated. If the weather's too warm, the pistols dry out too quickly and things don't happen. If it's too cold, say freezing temperatures, then those flowers can be damaged, damaged and nothing happens then as well. So it's an exciting time of the year for us. Uh, we're seeing good flower development and good potential across all our crops at the moment. We're not quite to apples yet, but uh, pears and cherries are in bloom and we've already seen bloom develop through apricots, nectarines, and peaches. So things are looking good. We're excited to be part of the American Agricultural Engine. We're considered a strategic industry, so during this difficult time when we're fighting the COVID-19 virus, we are continuing to do our jobs and go out every day to produce food for not only the United States, but when you look at the American agricultural system, we're producing food for the world. Uh, another interesting thought, uh, when I was young, I used to read survival books. And one of the things that stuck in my mind was a plant that I had seen around the orchards quite a bit. And, and sometimes there's people doing battle for toilet paper. And it's really puzzling to me uh, why they'd be stocking up on toilet paper instead of beautiful Autumn Glory apples. I mean, these are great, but this plant I'm referring to, flannel leaf mullein, look it up. One of the alternative uses 